Can we have the choir come up, please? Everyone help us sing. <clears throat> salvation, Lord, as we uh, put our faith and trust in him. We thank you for that, and we thank you for uh, the opportunity to be able to serve you now, Lord, to be able to know you, and to be able to uh, live our lives uh, according to your word, Lord, as we are so thankful for uh, just the blessings that you bring to us as we uh, live for you and uh, we just pray Lord as we are here tonight that we would just um, be able to meet with you again uh, tonight we ask you to as we listen to the words of these songs to continue just to think about uh, these truths from your word that we're uh, singing about help us to uh, Lord not just let it be uh, something we hear in our our ears, but it's something that we uh, allow to affect our heart, Lord, and that we uh, let the Word of God affect our heart. And Lord, we ask you to be with our pastor and uh, just give him liberty to preach tonight and uh, give him uh, power. And uh, Lord, help us as we uh, listen to uh, be obedient to the uh, leading of the Holy Spirit and to uh, just uh, let 
your message and your word uh, penetrate our hearts and help us, Lord, then to respond in an appropriate way, Lord. And as you give us direction and, and guidance that we would follow and we would uh, just do the things that you uh, are, are asking us to do and go the way that you're leading us to go, Lord. But we do thank you for our church and we <laughs> pray you continue to bless our church and help us to continue to uh, be a people that uh, bring honor and glory to your name every day uh, that we live, Lord. We uh, thank you for uh, this day and uh, we just pray that all things will be done in a way that would bring honor and glory to your precious name. So we love you and we thank you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Well, you can be seated again tonight. We want to welcome you back to our evening service tonight. And we're looking forward again to just finishing our day here in the Lord's house. And we appreciate uh, the good music already today. And uh, I like the last one. I know that I'm saved. And I'm thankful that I have that in my heart. I know that. And I'll be in heaven one day with my Savior. So that's uh, what a wonderful way to start our service. We do want to make just a few announcements uh, here this evening, remind you about a few things. Don't forget about the Kings Court basketball program our, uh, and cheer program. Our, ro- our registration brochures are available. I just got another one today, and so we're excited to be able to uh, get working on that, and we'll have a meeting soon and those kind of things. So we're looking forward to uh, our Kings Court program, and they'll begin at the beginning of the year. Uh, also, in the month of December, we have some Love Works projects that we'll be doing. Uh, uh, of course, the one uh, for our community is the Christmas cookies, and we're going to be uh, having Christmas cookies, taking them to different businesses in uh, South Point, and we'll send that sign-up sheet around again in case you haven't seen it. And we're just asking for some cookies, maybe on uh, a, a nice platter that you're not expecting to get back, and we'll just present that as a gift uh, to uh, those businesses and uh, have a nice gift to share Christ's love uh, with our community in that way. So we're looking forward to that. And also don't forget that our Church Love Works project is uh, the poinsettias for the church and for the auditorium. And so uh, we'll do that as well. So don't forget about those things. There are cards uh, back here uh, on the table, uh, back through this uh this hallway and you'll be able to get some cards that give more information about those as well uh, if you need that so don't forget about that uh, we're going to have our Christmas recital we have uh, every year coming up on the 21st uh, that evening service and so uh, we passed the sign-up sheet around this morning and have several people have signed up and so we're excited about that a lot of different instruments are already been signed up to be played and so that'll be a fun night Uh, if you play an instrument or want to participate in that we want to encourage you to be a part of that and so that'll be a good night and you won't want to miss that uh, as well and then our choir has been practicing for uh, their Christmas program and that'll be uh, uh, that Sunday as well we look forward to that and we look forward to this that Christmas service and being able to uh, use that service as an opportunity to uh, just invite people to be in our services. We want to be praying that the Lord will be at work on that day. So I hope you'll be praying for that service, be praying for the choir as they present that special music, be praying for our pastor as he uh, prepares to preach on that day as well. As we should every week, we want to be praying and uh, just expecting the Lord to do something uh, on that day. So we're excited. There's lots of things going on uh, in our church, and so you want to make sure, don't, oh, don't forget about the Christmas dinner on Saturday. We want to encourage everyone to come and be a part of that as well at 6 o'clock. And so that'll be a great night as well. So make sure you have all these things on your calendar and you're uh, ready to be here and be a part of all these good things that we'll be uh, having uh, the month of December. At this time, we'll ask our men to come. We'll take up our tithes offering and our missions offering this evening. Amen. Well, let's pray together tonight. Amen.
very good job, and I appreciate our orchestra playing, and uh, we need as many of our uh, folks in our church who have instruments and can play uh, to just uh, come on and bring them in and begin uh, practicing with our orchestra and playing with them, and uh, it'll be a great way for you to uh, be a blessing to others, and we appreciate the good music tonight. We'll have them play, they'll be playing during our Christmas recital as well, so that'll be a good time to get in there and get involved in that. Well, I know uh, this time of the year, I always enjoy uh, receiving Christmas cards, and that's one of the thing our one of the things our church does this every year is make it uh, easier for our church family to exchange cards, save the postage on them, and those kind of things. And we usually set up a little Christmas uh, post office uh, here in in the church, somewhere in the auditorium. And this year, we're going to do a little bit differently. We've taken the last room that's uh, here before you go out the side door and set that up as a Christmas post office box back there with all of the uh, boxes out where you can place cards in by the last name of families. And uh, so if you have a card you'd like to give to the, someone in the church family, you can take it back there and just drop it in there uh, before the services or after the services or uh, either way. Uh, and it'll be a little more, more out of the way and uh, you won't uh, feel maybe like you're uh, uh, everybody's watching you up there going through the cards and that kind of thing and I always tell you you don't leave them over there long there could be a hundred dollars in one of them and you never know it so always check them check your cards to see if you have some but uh, that's already set up and ready and uh, we'll have a Christmas card list a list of names of folks in the church if you would like one uh, if you'll ask mom for one she'll get you one but we'll also have that in the church dropbox file which might be a lot easier for a lot of you just to go on there and click on it and print it out and you'll have it we'll have it on there this week and uh, so that will be a blessing and we always enjoy that uh, fun to give and exchange cards so that's up and ready to go and uh, just another thing to help us uh, move a little bit closer to Christmas time. But on uh, Sunday nights, we always receive our change offering for summer camp, and uh, we're looking forward to it. In 2015, the weeks are reserved, start June the 8th, and go throughout that week, and we'll have a great week together, I know. But we need to receive that offering, so I need my helpers to come up and help me tonight, all right? And uh, lend me a hand. If you have some offering, get that out and get it ready, and they'll come by and they'll pick it up for us right after we have a word of prayer together. All right, we're going to pray and thank the Lord for the offering. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus uh, that we can pray and come to you and Lord that you hear us and you uh, know God our needs and we can thank you for how good you are to us and we thank you tonight that God you lay it upon the hearts and you give the provision to people uh, to give an offering for summer camp and Lord uh, we thank you for what you do in our lives that week of camp and uh, Lord uh, it does work uh, a work that Lord lasts a lifetime and for many an eternity and so Lord we just pray that you'll bless this offering and Lord when it comes time to go to camp that we'll have what we need to be able to uh, pay the bills and we'll have folks with a heart that surrendered to go and to serve and to volunteer and uh, Lord, we'll have many boys and girls we can take and share the gospel with. So we thank you again for the offering tonight and for those who are helping us. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, if you have some offering, just hold your hand up. They're going to come by and pick it up for you.
man, that was good again. Thank you. You're doing a great job, and thank you for my help taking up the offering. That's a blessing, and uh, just uh, thankful for our families who have uh, young children in church on Sunday night, and I know they can, they can count on God honoring His Word, and uh, God will bless, and God will help them and those young people throughout their lifetime. Well, take your Bibles and open them up and have them ready to the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 1. And I mentioned this morning we're going to begin now for a few services to kind of unwrap some of the Christmas gifts that we have uh, in Christ Jesus, the great gift that God gave to all men. And so you can find your place there, Luke chapter number 1. We're going to look together there again tonight. I want you to be in prayer uh, about something and I also... Uh, would like to just have you thinking and praying. I'd like to receive a love offering at the end of the service. There was a young man that was here this morning and sat about right where Brother Bob's sitting. And I uh, spoke to him for a little while after the service is over. And uh, he's a single father. He's got about four children. I think he has two or three of them uh, himself. And uh, uh, he's living over here at Grandview. Uh, he's originally from West Virginia. He, he told me he's working for McSweeney's as a machinist, and I asked Jim tonight, and Jim confirmed that, yes, he is. He works 6 p.m., I think, to, how, how is it, Jim? He works all night or something, 6 p.m. to 6 in the morning. Yeah, and uh, so he's in, a, he's in a really tough spot, and uh, he needs some help with these rents, less than $200 to help him there, and I just told him we'll take a love offering up for you and I'll go by there and I'll pay that uh, tomorrow or whatever we get. I'll go by and make that payment for you. He doesn't know the Lord as his Savior, and he was honest about that. I didn't feel like he was ready to, uh, to, to pursue that this morning. But I did tell him that, you know, this will help you, uh, maybe, but it's going to be temporary. And the greatest need in your life is Jesus Christ. And uh, if you want to raise your children and never have to sit in that seat again in the future... By the grace of God, seek first the kingdom of God. And, uh, and God's promised you he'll meet needs in your life. And, uh, you know, he told me, he said, you know, it could be that I'm here today and I'm going through what I'm going through uh, because I don't know or have Jesus Christ. And so I hope you'll pray for him. And, and I, I'm, I'm going to follow up on him and uh, I'm praying he'll be ready uh, to talk to me about that the next time I see him. So, uh, so we're, his name is Kyle Richardson. Kyle Richardson. And so uh, pray for him. And on the way out today, tonight, we'll have a couple offering plates out if you would like to share something. Uh, he's got, uh, he's got uh, an elderly neighbor uh, and lives in one of the apartments near him that watches his children for him when he's at work. And he doesn't have a car. He's been walking back and forth to work or getting a ride to work. That's over in the point, isn't it, Jim, where that is? Plus, he walked here today, and, I, and Jim, did you take him home? Yeah, and uh, so, uh, so uh, he's, uh, you know, he told me it's one of the hardest things he ever did to have sat in that seat and ask me that. And we all sometimes can be there. Uh, he got an associate degree. He's been to college. He's a smart young man, uh, and he's in a difficult place. So just, but, but more importantly, God's working in his life, and so... We're praying he'll sincerely seek the Lord. So uh, we'll take care of that at the end of the service. But uh, if you're in Luke chapter 1, we're going to begin to read in verse 26. And uh, tonight we're going to look at God's gift of peace. This morning we looked at God's gift of hope. And, uh, you know, all of us maybe can enjoy at times looking back through our life and uh, remembering maybe that one Christmas when we got that great gift that just one thing that boy we just never forgot that 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 just was what we wanted and we got it and uh, you know maybe it was when you were a child or maybe when you were an adult but there was just that one thing and, and you really got that and that's just been that one gift that sticks out in your mind but you know when you consider the gift of Jesus Christ what a, what a great thought uh, the Bible says it's unspeakable not that we shouldn't speak about it, but that we can never fully express how great that gift is. And uh, uh, it was miraculous in the fact that it was given for all men, 
for all men the gift that God gave when He gave us Jesus Christ. And in Jesus Christ is the fullness of everything that God is. And so what a great gift. And when we begin to dive into that and begin to look at it and really take the scriptures and, and, and see it, we see how many wonderful things we have because we have Jesus Christ. And so tonight we're going to look at having the gift of peace, uh, the gift of peace. But let's just read and you can follow along beginning in Luke chapter 1, and I'll start in verse 26, Luke chapter 1, verse 26. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And, behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. And then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born unto thee shall be called the Son of God. And we'll stop right there, but let's think about the gift of peace. Heavenly Father, what a good day you've allowed us to have as we now, Lord, are, are moving into the time of the year when, God, our hearts and mind, our focus is drawn to the great account in Scripture of, Lord, the, uh, the prophecy of your first coming into the world, born, uh, Lord, as a babe, laying in a manger in Bethlehem. And Lord, as we consider the gift you gave us when you gave us Jesus Christ, you gave us so much more than simply eternal life. And Lord, eternal life we know and can have by grace through faith. But Lord, help us to know more fully what we have in you. And Lord, know that those great gifts that you've given in your Son are for every man and woman, boy and girl that know you as their Savior and so, Lord, we pray today that you'll just speak to our hearts about the subject, the gift of peace. What a great, great gift this is. And, Lord, we pray that you'll help each of us in our lives, that God, uh, especially, Lord, uh, now at this time of the year, as it is important always, but this time of the year, how important peace is to our hearts. And so, Lord, we just uh, look to you now. Bless your word. Let the Holy Spirit work. Lord, may we see ourselves as you see us. May we look through the windows of Scripture. Lord, may we apply truth to our lives by faith. May it be our desire tonight to grow in Christ's likeness. And Lord, may we uh, avail ourselves of the many wonderful gifts you've given us in Christ Jesus. And so, Lord, tonight, if someone is unsaved, we pray they'll receive you as their Savior tonight. And we just ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, this time of the year is often referred to and sung about as the most wonderful time of the year, isn't it? And, uh, you know, the reality of it is, is for a lot of people, it's a time of major stress and anxiety. Uh, we've made it that way, haven't we? We've uh, so hyped it up and uh, we put such high expectations on all the other things. And we know that it can be a season of unrest. And it can be something sometimes, if we're honest, we just kind of look forward to turning the page on the calendar and getting into a new year. But, you know, most of us, uh, it'll take a lot of time and activity before Christmas comes, especially if you're young and you have children. Uh, I know that there's a lot of extra preparation to make Christmas uh, special, make it what we want it to be for our children. If, uh, if you're a parent or you're working and you have a family, Sometimes it's all those overtime hours and shifts you can get just to be sure that you have what you need to be able to try to 
purchase or buy what you want to be able to. And whether you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior or whether you do not, the most wonderful time of the year can be a time of real stress and overload in our life. It can be a time of unrest. And at Christmas time, when we recognize the gift of Jesus Christ that God gave to all men, we need to re receive, we need to receive now and, and all the time, but so much uh, and so importantly now, we need to receive the gift of peace that Jesus Christ can bring into our hearts and lives, into our homes and families. And the peace that he gives us is an inner uh, peace, a settling peace. It's a stabilizing peace that the world doesn't know anything about and the world has no substitute for. In Isaiah chapter 9, the sixth verse uh, tells us, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. In 750 years, this prophecy came through Isaiah before the birth of Jesus Christ. And it speaks in that verse about both who Jesus Christ will be and what he can do. He was a child that was born. He was born. He was born of a woman. She was a virgin. In our text tonight, the Bible tells us that, uh, that she wondered about that. And the, the angel told her, the Holy Ghost is going to come upon you, Mary. And though he's going to be born through your womb, he's going to be the Son of God. Because he's not the Son of Man in the fact that man had anything to do with his conception. He's the Son of God. And that's who he is. And, and one of the gifts that God gave to man when he gave man Jesus Christ was that he gave us a man, the God-man, who can give peace. That's what he can do. He can give peace. He can bring peace. And when you study God's Word, we find that this gift of peace begins with, first of all, the peace of God, peace from God. That's where, that's where peace comes from. You can write down 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 3, and it says, Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father. And from the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, in the book of 1 Corinthians, that's within the first three verses of the first chapter. And if you're familiar with the letters that Paul wrote to the churches, he always began them with a salutation, didn't he, to those churches. You know, over 16 times that same phrase is repeated throughout those epistles. He talks about the peace that he wants and desires for the people of God. And that that peace comes only from God and Jesus Christ. And when we think about the gift of real true peace, we know that it comes from God. It's peace from God. And then there's peace with God that God gives us through His Son. Romans 5 verse 1 says, Therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ our Lord. And so... We know that man could never be at peace with God if it were not for the gift of the Son, Jesus Christ. Without Jesus Christ as our Savior, we are not at peace with God. We are, at, we are an enemy of God. Our sin has caused His Son to suffer, bleed, and die. And the wrath of God abides upon lost sinners. And we are not at peace with Him. And we will never be at peace with Him. He will be a divine holy, righteous judge, and he will execute judgment and justice upon all sin and sinners. But through Jesus Christ, we have peace with God. Peace with God. So peace comes from God. We have peace with God when we have Jesus Christ. And then there's the peace of God, the peace of God. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 20. Now the peace of God that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and forever. Amen. Paul, writing, we believe, to the believers here, the Hebrew believers, he talks about the peace of God ruling and overruling their heart. They were going through one of the darkest times in the history of the church because there was such global persecution 
for those who named the name of Jesus Christ. They had been scattered abroad all throughout the known world because of their faith in Christ. And now he's saying to them, that peace of God that you have from God through Christ, that will perfect in you and it will work in you so that you're able to continue to serve God and do His will. Because you're going to have the peace of God which works in you. And that is going to be well-pleasing to the sight of God. So uh, he, we have the gift of peace. It begins from God. It came from Him. And through Christ Jesus and receiving the gifts, we have peace with God. But we can know the peace of God internally, that settling and stabilizing peace the world cannot know. And so from before the foundation of the world and before the creation of man, it was God's plan to provide to man, man who was separated because of his sin uh, from God, sentenced to an eternity in hell. It was God's plan to give peace to men through the gift of His Son, Jesus Christ. And it's a joy to read about that great truth all throughout the Word of God. We find that truth. When we come to the text tonight, I enjoy reading uh, verses like verse 26. Every word we believe the Bible is chosen by God, isn't it? It's God's Word. He inspired it. Every word, verbally and plenarily. And when we look at verse 26, it's just chock full of just little details that give the Word of God a real sense of, uh, of genuineness about it. It helps us to, uh, to just really connect with this. And you'll notice here what it talks about. It, he says very specifically, the sixth month. It was in the sixth month. And you know, when you and I recount a personal experience we're able to do that. We're able to go back and say, well, it was Wednesday or it was this day and, you know, uh, it was this month or, or whatever. And God begins to talk about the giving of His Son, the gift of Jesus Christ. And the Bible says it was the sixth month when God sent an angel. But God said it wasn't just an angel. He named it, but it was Gabriel, the angel, Gabriel. And he says it was uh, sent unto uh, a city in Galilee, but not just the region of Galilee, specifically a city called Nazareth. And I, I like it when we find things like that in the Bible because, you know, what we have here is, is a real time and a real place when a real God began unfolding His work of giving the gift of His Son. And uh, that just makes it so, uh, so real and, and so able to connect with that for us. We told you this morning we'll look at Galatians chapter 4 a lot, but backing up to the third verse this morning, uh, we only read verse 4, but verse 3 says, Even so we, when we were children, were under the bondage of the elements of the world. We were bound up to the elements of the world. In other, word, in other words, the, the principles and formulas of this life that all men are born sinners, separated from God, lost without Christ, on our way to hell, and, un, and unable and hopeless of changing that in any way. All men were bound up under those elements of the world. And then the Bible said, But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth His Son, made of a woman, uh, made under the law to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive uh, the adoption of sons. And I said we'll look at that text probably no doubt and think about it a lot during the Christmas season. But uh, as we do and every time we do, it should reassure us of God's love for us, that God had that plan that He put into motion and he had the power to bring it to fruition and he sent Jesus Christ to us and God desires tonight for all men to have the gift of peace. Now I want you to look at just three things quickly. Number one, uh, we're thinking about the gift of peace and the gift of peace number one, he gave peace for people. He gave peace for people. He wants people to have peace. Verse 26, we read it, then on down through verse 27 and verse 28, we find angel, the, uh, the angel Gabriel uh, was the one that God selected to bring the news of God's gift of peace to people. And uh, as he spoke to Mary, uh, I, I believe no doubt Mary's was the first human voice then to share the message of peace. Isn't that amazing? 
She probably told Elizabeth. She told those closest to her. She had that news first. She was the first one to be able to share the message of God's gift of peace that was about to be given. And so what an exciting thing. And we find that uh, she had that privilege of bringing God's peace to others. And listen tonight, uh, we are like Mary in the fact that uh, we can bring the message of peace to men and women, boys and girls. What a privilege it is to know Him as our Savior, uh, to have His hand upon our life, and to be able to be a vessel through which the great message of the gift of peace can be brought to men, each of us as God's people, bringing the message of peace to anyone and everyone that we meet. And when we look at Mary, there are several other things that we ought to be sure of uh, that are true about our lives. If we, too, want to be vessels God can use to share peace with people, to be a voice that will be listened to when we speak and talk about the peace of God. And when you look at the text, there's some encouraging things I find uh, here that encourages me. We find that Mary was from this small city of Nazareth. This is where she was from. God looked down into all the world and He looked down into His land, the land of the people of God, and He looked down into all the cities and villages and He found the little city of Nazareth. And in that little city of Nazareth, a young woman, a maiden, a virgin, found her. And uh, Nazareth means the watchtower. That's what the word means. And when we understand the word watchtower, that phrase, we know that that referred to a place where people would look to to receive news. They would be warned there of danger coming. And isn't it fitting that God looked into a little place called Nazareth and said, listen, I'm, I'm sounding out the, the news beginning right here in this city that there is peace for all men and that without the gift of my son and peace with me through him there's judgment and destruction coming because of the enemy of sin. Nazareth it was in the lower region of Galilee and was a part of the portion that had been given to Zebulon. And uh, we know that the Bible tells about how the land of Israel was distributed out to the tribes and, and, and Zebulun and Naphtali uh, were there very near together and this area that, uh, that, that Nazareth was, was in was given to a portion of them and it was a humble city. When you look through the Old Testament and you know you get out of concordance and maybe you miss it, but looking through the Old Testament... I never find the word Nazareth anywhere in all 39 books of the Old Testament. That's how unimportant that city was throughout the history of Israel occupying the land. And it was an insignificant city. Uh, It was a town that had the reputation of being unimportant. You remember that when uh, in John chapter 1, Philip, the Bible said in verse 45, findeth Nathanael and said unto him, we found him of whom Moses and the law uh, and the prophets did write. And he says, Jesus of Nazareth and uh, the son of Joseph and Nathanael said unto him, can there be any good thing come out of Nazareth? And Philip saith unto him, will you come and see? You come and see. And so that's the kind of city it was. Now, I know people maybe not like to talk about that or acknowledge that, but we could kind of throw that down here on some of the places we live, couldn't we? (laughs) Not real world-shattering, earth-shattering types of significant things have happened in a lot of our communities. But you know what? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter about that because here was this woman from this place. You don't even find it talked about in all the Old Testament, and even people knew it had a reputation of nothing important ever happening there. But I tell you what that does is God is so uh, gracious and encouraging through His Word that it helps us to understand that every one of us had the potential to be used of God to share the message of peace with all men because it's not about our geographical location. It doesn't matter we don't live in a big metropolis or in some other place where we think uh, that maybe there's more opportunity or whatever the case may be. Uh, It's not about uh, the economic means we have or educational qualifications. It's about being used of God uh, according to how our heart is toward Him. And that's what he found when he found Mary, wasn't it? 
he found her heart right, ready to be used of God, ready to be a vessel that God could fulfill and further His plan for man. And God's Word is faultless in the integrity of Mary's life. And we're going to emphasize this so much because it's de-emphasized so much. But he makes it clearly known in this passage as well that Mary was physically pure. She was a virgin having never known a man. And God's Word emphasizes that and protects that truth. And it's necessary for our salvation. Verse number uh, 34 talks about it. Uh, she said, how, how can that be knowing uh, I know not a man? And God said that's all right because what, what needs to happen here is not the birth of another man child born under sin, but there needs to be something different take place. The Son of God needs to come into the world. And so we find Mary and, uh, and her purity that she had set herself apart, that she had kept herself clean. Listen, the world today glamorizes uh, promiscuity so much on everything that, uh, that you, can, you can't watch TV. Every commercial is, is slanted with some kind of sexual hook that they try to bring. And, and uh, magazine covers and newspapers and, and television shows are all filled with these kinds of things. And, and the immorality. And listen, young people, you young boys and girls, young men and women, you teenagers, keep yourself Pure in every way to God. Listen, don't give away things you can't get back. And don't do things and make that choice that you're going to regret somewhere down the road. Uh, be as Mary was and set yourself apart, body, soul, and spirit. And let God direct your life. Wait on God to show you how He wants to use your life. Be determined to be prepared for anything that God might choose you to do for Him. And a part of that is purity. Purity of our heart, mind, our body, our soul, everything that we are and everything that we have. And for us that know Jesus Christ as our Savior, for us beyond their age, what that means for all of us is being prepared for God to use our lives by keeping our vessels now clean and sanctified unto Him. Keeping them set apart for Him. In 2 Timothy, uh, Paul uh, the Holy Spirit uses him to write in chapter 1 and beginning in the 19th verse. He says, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are His. And that's a, great, that's a great statement. But that should be a very sobering statement to every one of us. Because if we know Him as our Savior, if we're truly born again, He knows us. And He is looking at our lives Listen, he found that one young girl among the millions in the world in that insignificant backwoods place called Nazareth. And he knew her. He knew everything about her. He, he knew her inside and out. He knew her heart, her mind, her motives. He knew it all. And she was found to be pleasing, set apart, uh, sanctified, clean, uh, a vessel of honor that God could use. And, and God knows those that are His. And the Bible said, Let every one of them that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. And then He's talking about all of God's people. And He talks about it being like a great household of people. And, and in a great house, uh, there are all different types of people. And he says in that 20th verse, but in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and earth, some to honor and some to dishonor. What a shame that Paul had to write that, isn't it? You would think that every single one that in the world that is named the name of Jesus Christ would be a vessel of honor under God, set apart, uh, clean, uh, never disgracing His name or His testimony of faith, uh, being, uh, being uh, unique and peculiar unto Christ and, and, and being ready to be used of God at any moment. But sadly, God said, that's not always the case. I've got some vessels out there that are unclean. They're dirty. I can't, I can't use them right now uh, the way that I plan or would want to do. They're dishonoring unto me. And he goes on to say, If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified meat for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. And I can't encourage everyone enough tonight 
You know, it says of Mary in verse 28, you are highly favored. Now, the Catholic Church has taken that simple statement and blown it tremendously out of proportion. And they have deified her. And, you know, that's not at all what the thought was. I can tell you what, you got everyone here, if you know Jesus Christ as your Savior, you're as equally highly favored to be a vessel that God will use if we will keep ourselves uh, and, and set ourselves apart unto Jesus Christ. Keep ourselves pure through Christ. And uh, it means that she was blessable. That statement, you are highly favored, that means she was blessable. It means that uh, she was usable to the highest possible means because she had purposed and prepared herself. She was pure within her heart. She had a desire to please God. And because of that, God was able to find a vessel through which peace could come to all people. So the peace here that we're talking about was a peace for all people. And we, as God's people, can have a role in that peace uh, being made known to all men. But think about a second thing. Peace will be a person. It will be a person. In verse 31 down through verse 35, the angel tells her about the child that will be conceived and will be born and that his name will be Jesus. She tells, he's told, he tells her all manner of wonderful things about that child. He shall be great. He'll be the son of the highest and He'll sit on the throne of his father David and he'll have a kingdom that will have no end and, and uh, he'll rule and reign forever and ever. And, and the angel meets with her and brings Mary that good news of the coming birth of Jesus Christ. And Mary, just as Joseph did when he learned about what had occurred with Mary and pondered and thought about those things, when that angel came to Mary, she did the very same thing. Humanly, she began to let the gears and the wheels start to turn. And the Bible says here that uh, this angel speaking to her about these things, uh, that she, she wondered how could these things be? How can all of this come to pass? Uh, she knew her own purity, and she knew... Uh, that, uh, uh, and to think that she was going to bear a child or of how the child the angel said she was about to give birth to could do and be everything that that angel told her he was going to do and be, uh, it perplexed her. And it caused her to consider how can these things be possible. You know, there's times in our lives when God speaks to us through His Word, through prayer through the circumstances and situations of life and and God shows us what he's asking for us he shows us the path he wants us to take the choices he wants us to make and and sometimes we respond in the same way and we ask ourselves how can all of that be how, how can that be sometimes it happens to young men God might begin to work in your life to call you to preach or call you in the ministry and you begin to evaluate it all and you wonder how can that be how can that be and, uh, you know, in other things in life, God is directing us, guiding us, leading us. He's showing us His work and plan, and He's asking and showing us his, our part in those things. And we just wonder, Lord, how, how can all these things be? And there's times when God moves, and is it work in our lives, and God's working all around us, and we don't understand all that He's doing, or we don't know all that we would like to know. And I think Mary probably was in that situation. But you know what? Even in the midst of all that turmoil and disruption, God still wants us to have the gift of peace. He wants us to have peace. Verse number 37 says, For with God nothing shall be impossible. Nothing shall be impossible. How? Oh, don't know. But it's not impossible. But when? I don't know. But it's not going to be impossible. All the, all the questions, what, how, when, who, where, they can all be summed up by that verse. But with God, all things are possible. Nothing is impossible with God. And that great truth about peace is that it does not depend on the circumstances or situations or if we know all, or we, uh, all that we would like to know or not. Because peace is a person. Peace is Jesus Christ. And with Him we can have peace regardless of what's going on all around us. Peace being a person is important. 
Because then we're not looking for all these certain things to have to fall into place. Because no matter what place they're all in, in place or out of place in our life, if Jesus Christ is in His proper place, we can have peace in the middle of all of it. It's His very presence in our life brings peace into our heart and life. Verse 31, Jesus Christ was given to men to be their Savior. Their Savior, and this is what men need. Jesus, the name Jesus, you'll call Him Jesus. That's the only name given among men that a man can call on that he can be saved. The only one, isn't it? Jesus. And uh, with Jesus Christ, calling on the name of Jesus Christ, men are saved from death and hell and separation from God. And we have peace with God. And when Jesus Christ, peace comes into our hearts and, and lives there through the grace of God, uh, we know that He brings peace because He Himself is peace. His presence is peace in our life. And His presence brings peace. And His peace is a perfect peace. His peace is a perfect peace. Verses 32 and 33, he, he shall be great. He shall be called the Son of the Highest. The Lord God shall give him the throne of his father David. He shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. Of his kingdom there shall be no end. There's just so many wonderful things that the angel says about Jesus in those two verses of Scripture, but the surface is never scratched on all the perfect things that he is. And that perfect presence can live in our hearts and life. Listen, Jesus Christ was the eternal God. He's God. John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word was made flesh, in verse 14, and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And when we get a picture and glimpse of Jesus, we're seeing God. And when we have Jesus, we have the eternal God in our hearts and in our lives. And in Him is all that God is and all that God has to give. Colossians chapter 2, verse 6, As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in Him, rooted and built up in Him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in Him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and ye are complete in Him which is the head of all principality and power. And when we realize that we have peace in the person of Christ, and that He is the perfect Christ, and that there isn't anything that we need that we don't have in Him, in our lives, then we can have peace no matter what is happening around our life. No matter what's going on. The good news message of peace that we can share with all people is the message that Jesus Christ Himself is peace regardless of their circumstances or situations. That He can bring peace in the midst of the storm. And He can settle the storm or give them peace as they go through. So this gift of peace, it was given to people. And we as people, the people of God, can have a part in peace as we keep our life holy and separated unto Him. It doesn't matter where we are. It doesn't matter how big, small, or whatever the case may be. God will use our lives as they are pleasing to Him. And then uh, the peace is a person. It's not, it's not as long as these things all work out or this circumstance turns around. No, as long as we have Christ in our heart, we have peace because that peace is in the perfect person of Christ. But then this last thought, peace is possible through the work of God. Peace is possible through the work of God. Verse 35, 6, and 7, Mary gets this tremendous message. Oh, Mary, I'm the angel Gabriel. God has sent me. And though I know you're a virgin and you're pure and never been with man, you're going to conceive and you're going to bring forth a son. He's going to be the son of God. Uh, he's going to be the savior of men from their sins. And uh, she asks, how can all these things be possible? And and, you know, uh, the Bible says there, God, the Holy Ghost, in verse 35, the Holy Ghost will come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. And then verse 37, of course, says, For with God nothing shall be impossible. And the answer to the question, how, 
how can these things be is that this is what God, the Holy Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, this is what God is going to do. And that's why it's possible. That's why it's possible. And peace is possible because God makes it possible. God makes it possible. Man, with all of his endless efforts and futility, is trying to find peace. He's trying to bring peace to people, to countries, to nations, to cities. We see these racial things flare up in our city, across our nation, and all the disruption and, and all the unrest that take place. And, and men are trying to bring peace, but, but man doesn't know how to do that because peace is beyond his capability. It's not a part of his, his human nature. His human nature is ultimately war and to rob and to steal and to kill. This is why we have all these things in our world. Sin has brought them. The sin of man is depraved nature. And man is a sinner and peace is not possible for him. The best presidents we've ever had have tried. And politicians try. Military strategists have looked at conflicts and they've tried to design a way to overcome by force and bring peace. And sometimes we know that that only brought more unrest. And sociologists and economists have tried to figure out a way to bring peace to men. And all try and all fail and many more will try and they will all fail. Because there is no peace apart from God's work. But with the work of God, peace is possible. It doesn't matter how bad it is, peace is possible. It doesn't matter how dark it is, there is hope. Hope and peace are possible through the present person of Christ and the power of God who is Christ. And God would find and use the life of a young woman. Uh, she had prepared herself, she had kept herself pure, separate to God. Her heart desired to please the Lord and He would by His own power give to man the gift of Jesus Christ. He would be born by a miraculous birth, just like God said that He would be. He would live a sinless life. We know that He would die a sacrificial death. He would be a substitute for us on the cross. That death would be a substitutional death. He would be buried like men that are dead are buried. But the difference is He would rise again from the dead under His own power, by His own hand, taking up His own life. And that same Jesus Christ, with that same power, will bring peace into our lives when we know Him as our Savior and as our Lord. Verse number 38, And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. And that's a verse of scripture. I have it marked and marked and asterisked and outlined in every color outline. You can outline it in because this is what we need to do. This is what we need to do. When Mary was given the choice, she chose to believe God's word and surrender her life to him. What is it that we're doing right now? Have we heard God speak? Do we know some things that are the will of God for our life? And He's made some things known to us. Are, are, we, are we like Mary? Have we said, Behold, Lord, here I am. You know everything about me and what I am. And Lord, just be it unto me according as your will. Or... Or are we still struggling? Are we still wrestling? Are we still uh, denying the peace that comes from surrendering to the Lord in our life? Listen, the songwriter said, just trust and obey. Trust Him and obey Him. And I'll tell you when we'll do that, it brings peace. It brings peace. You've been in some things in life. Dark things, hard things, things you don't even want to think about. You, you, you've, you've been facing some things that if all the possibilities that run through your mind, if some of those things were to come to pass, it would be devastating. And you wonder, I don't know how I could go forward. I don't know how I can go on. And then God comes and He'll speak to your heart. And He'll help you to remind you, I have a plan and I'm working and it doesn't matter all that's going on out there because I'm in here, I'm with you. 
And with me, nothing's impossible. And if we'll just surrender at all to the hand of God and let God do His work and say, God, I want your will, it's amazing peace that God will bring to your heart and life. You can't find it anywhere else. There is any other way but through the gift of God and through the work of Jesus Christ. Jeremiah 29, 11, last verse. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you. And this is God speaking. I know the thoughts I think toward you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace. Peace. And not of evil. See, the world, the world is so deceived. They, they think God looks at man and, and, and is pawning with man, playing with man, enjoys the suffering of man. Not, that's not God's thoughts toward man at all. And God wants us to have peace. He wants us to have peace, not of evil. He wants to give us an expected end. I like that. You say, Pastor, what's that mean? That means God has a plan for your life from the time of your birth till the time you leave this world. God has a plan. And He knows every step of the way. And by the way, the will of God for your life, Romans 12 says, it's good. It's acceptable. In fact, it's perfect. And God said, I have it all planned out here for you. Just surrender your life to me. Just keep your life clean and pure and separate to me. And just live to please me. And put it all in my hands. And know the peace that passeth understanding. And let me help bring you along the journey of life to the place I want to bring you to. The place of peace. And so, uh, the gift of peace. What a great gift we have in Jesus Christ. Eternal life, yes. Peace with God, yes but the peace that we can have of God in our hearts and lives every single day. This is a great need in our life, isn't it? It's a great need, the gift of peace, the gift of hope. We've looked at just a couple. There are so many others. But let's bow our heads tonight. We're going to close our eyes. We're going to have a word of prayer together. And I don't know the heart of every man and woman here today, but I do know this, that God's thoughts towards you are not of evil. They're of peace. He wants... He wants to bring you along in His will. He has a plan for you. He ultimately wants it all to end when you step out of this world into His presence. That's what He wants. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. You may be here tonight and you say, Pastor, I don't know the peace of God in my heart because I'm not sure I have peace with God through Jesus Christ. I know I need to be saved today. I want to talk to someone. I want someone to take the Word of God, show me from the Scripture how I can be saved. If that's true of you, I'm not going to belabor that, but would you please come? Just slip out of your seat and come. I'm thankful the day I slipped out of a pew and came forward and let someone take the Word of God and show me from the Scripture how I can be saved. You will never regret that one moment in eternity. You'll never regret it. Won't you come tonight if you need to be saved? Man, woman, boy, or girl, say, Pastor, people will think I am saved. It doesn't matter what other people think. It's what you know God knows. Won't you receive Him tonight? Why don't you come? I don't know what you're going through in life, all the circumstances and situations of life that life brings. I do know that Mary's an example that when we're thrown into some circumstances and situations that we get up one morning never knowing we're going to be thrown into. Mary didn't expect that conversation that day. She didn't expect that that was going to be what God's will for her future was or that she was going to have to go. And listen, it wasn't easy things she went through. All this talk and speculation of other people and the chatter and talk of little Nazareth that here's this young woman now that's expecting a child and she and her husband never consummated the marriage, and the way of serving God is not necessarily easy. But I tell you, in the middle of it all, she said, Lord, here I am. I'm your vessel. I've tried to be clean and pure. I've kept myself for you. I live to please you. My life is yours. Be it unto me according as it is thy will. That's the answer to peace. Wherever you are in your life right now, that's the answer to peace. That's, that's when the peace will come in. 
and you may have questions, things you don't know. Listen, you may be today struggling with things that have occurred to you in your past and you don't know why and you don't have the answer for them and you may never have it in this side of eternity. But if you'll just surrender it to the Lord, He'll bring the peace in. So I don't know what it is you're struggling with or what you're facing, but Jesus Christ in your life, Jesus Christ surrendered to Him, the all-powerful Creator God in your life, it's possible for you to know His peace. Heavenly Father, we pray in Your name tonight. We ask You to minister to every heart. May Your Word, Lord, have a resonating effect in our life. May it touch our life practically where we are. And may these truths that we've tried to simply put forth tonight, God, tonight, tomorrow, and days to come, may they help us, Lord, to know peace. And so, Father, tonight, we just pray we'll be obedient to you. If folks, God, want to respond tonight, know that need in their heart, we pray they will. And, Lord, we just look to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's stand, if we will, and take those hymn books out. And if the Lord's spoken to your heart, if you feel like you need to come and just find a place and spend some time with the Lord, we invite you to do it. But let's turn to Him. 282 in our hymn book. 282. Sing that first verse. Verse 5. been just a good place to be today and thinking about these gifts that we get uh, from our Lord Jesus Christ hope and now peace uh, we've looked at today and I, I just have enjoyed the day and enjoyed God's word I hope you have too don't forget as we leave today the offering plate will be back there uh, for that special love offering for the gentleman that pastor mentioned earlier so we uh, want to encourage you to seek the Lord and, and be a help if you can for that uh, but we'll finish uh, tonight and uh, just have a word of prayer and be finished today. Brother John Marcella, will you pray for us, please? Amen, yes. Lord, thank you for everything that we have. We thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.